Hello everybody. Happy, happy summer. Is the, are there any teachers on Facebook in the summer on a Monday morning? Usually I only do these live videos on Saturdays because that's when I know you're around. Um, but now it's summer and so there's perchance somebody watching this and if not, hopefully you can catch the recording. But um, I just wanted to hop on. It's been a little bit. I've just been enjoying summer to the fullest lately. Camping and swimming and just being disconnected from it all. And it has been glorious. And I hope that it's been the same for you. I know not everybody on here um, is on summer break just yet. Um, but I know a lot of my friends in the States stateside are on and then, um, but I know there's people from all over the place uh, who might be in the middle of winter right now if you're down in the southern hemisphere. Um, and so I just, uh, I just want to chat for a bit and, and what I specifically want to talk about right now, first off, good morning. If you want to drop where you're from, I, I'm always uh, just thrilled to see how many educators and teachers all over the world there are uh, tuning into these things. So. Um, I just, I wanted to chat about something. Oh, hi, Nazish from Pakistan. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's crazy. That, that's awesome. Good morning, welcome. Um, I wanted to chat about a graphic that I put on Facebook on my Epic Classroom page um, uh, just yesterday that has gotten a lot of traction. And, and I thought all this traction was worth talking about. Um, and, and I was going to write up my own reply because there's kind of a debate going on on my page right now. Um, and uh, I was going to give my response to it and write it all up. And then I thought, you know what, let's just hop on and do a little live video and talk about it in the flesh. Hi, Teresa in Illinois. Good to see you again. Judy in Missouri. Um, so I wanted to talk about this graphic. Hopefully you can see it. I don't know if it like if it's like a mirroring effect and you can actually see what is on my computer screen here. But I put up a graphic. A simple one that says, now that it's abundantly clear that teachers can still be effective while not wearing dresses and dress pants, can we get rid of the dumb no jeans policy? And then in my little caption up here, I said, giving up the sweatpants will be rough because let's be honest, we have been teaching in sweatpants lately. Um, but wouldn't jeans be a fair alternative? And I just put this up last night and in the last 24 hours, I mean, thousands of people have looked at it and shared it and commented on it. And there is just this whole debate taking place about whether teachers should be allowed to wear jeans. Now, when I put up this post, it, it's kind of silly, right? Like, it, it's kind of a silly, fun, little light post. However, it's also more than that, and I think that's why there's such a reaction to it. You know what I mean? First off, I think the reason that it's gotten so much traction, because not everything I put on Facebook gets a lot of hits like that, um, but I think one of the reasons it's got so, many, so much traction is because people all over the world can resonate with this, right? How many teachers out there, and feel free to chime in on this, how many teachers out there are not allowed to wear jeans at school? Not just, not, not a, yeah, I mean, how many, feel free to chime in from Perth, Australia, and Lansing, Michigan, just an hour east of me right now, and St. Joe, Michigan, just an hour south of me right now, um, and Perth in, in Western Australia, Straya, sorry, I'm a big Steve Irwin fan. I say it like him. I know that's probably not correct. And friends in Croatia, how many of you are not allowed to wear jeans at school? Because I think that gets to the bottom of it. And, and that's why I think this is more than just wearing jeans. Because to me, and, and every school I've ever worked in, there was a no jeans policy. So teachers can wear whatever they want, but they're not allowed to wear jeans. And, and what you're seeing in the debate going on here is people saying, well, teachers should look professional. They shouldn't wear jeans. We have to set this standard for students that we're professionals and we need to look like it. Or you see a lot of school policies that say only on Friday are you allowed to wear jeans, which raises the question to me, does that mean we're giving up professionalism on Fridays? Does that mean on Friday uh, we're having a lesser learning experience for students? Because if jeans are that important to have a policy where we're telling grown professionals who are mostly college educated, have to renew their certificates, spend thousands of dollars to get into this profession, are, are told that we are professionals, and, and by looking like professionals four days out of the week, we are giving our students a better learning experience. But on Friday, we're not gonna give them the same 
heightened learning experience. We're going to say, you know what, on Fridays you can wear jeans, but students will not respect you as much because you don't look as professional. The learning will not be as effective because you're wearing jeans on Fridays, but on Fridays we'll just loosen that standard. Is that what's happening? Do, I mean, do you, do you think that's what it is? On, on Fridays, we're just going to be lesser teachers because we're wearing jeans? I mean, there, there seems to be like this weird double standard that's happening or this inconsistency that uh, is going on. Patty says that she's only allowed to wear them during rodeo week. I want to know more about this rodeo week. Um, so, and I'm seeing lots of comments on here where people saying I'm not allowed to wear them, uh, or I can only wear them on spirit days, or you know, teachers are giving them as an incentive. If you are, if you give to this charity, I mean, how many times have you seen that? There's a fundraiser going on at school, and if you give a certain amount, you win the right to wear jeans. Which translates to me, if you give the most money to this fundraiser, you are allowed to have a lesser learning experience for your students. You are allowed to be a little less professional for your students for a day. I mean, you see how kind of like why I put the words dumb gene policy? It doesn't seem to make sense. Now, I do understand uh, the idea of looking professional, right? Like, I mean, as teachers, we are professionals and we do model that for our students. Um, and so I get that, but I'm wondering is genes actually un are jeans actually unprofessional like are, are are there is there something about wearing nice jeans and then a dress shirt does that look less professional than khakis or a dress or a skirt uh, or whatever it is um is that does that make you a better teacher does it actually enhance the learning does it change students perspective of you or is it an outdated policy that kind of needs to go by the wayside now my opinion is um, that we should be allowed to wear jeans. Why? Because if you are a teacher, you are hired thinking that you are a professional, that you were effective in your craft, that you could engage students and, and, and effectively teach them and keep them engaged and do all of this work. My guess is, is that you are hired because you are a professional capable of doing this work and therefore you should be trusted to dress the way you want to dress knowing that you are cognizant of how you're going to be perceived by students. And so if you as a personal, as, as an individual deem that you can still be effective and still set an example for students and still look the part of a professional, then you should be allowed to choose. That's my opinion. Now the debate going on is that no, uh, it, it's unprofessional looking and, and it's not good for students and it's not good what it looks like. And I get that and I respect that debate. Um, and, and but then let, let's get rid of that weird double standard that you're allowed to do it one day of the week or that you can win coupons or that you can be treated like I dare I say treated like a child and said hey if you be really good we'll award you with the uh, the allowance to wear jeans one day a week doesn't that seem a little silly to you you know what I mean Christopher says I agree I feel like on the days I can wear jeans I have a different energy yes I, I wear jeans dress shirt dress shoes yeah I mean, it comes down to respect, right? That's what it comes down to. As an educator, as a teacher, I am a professional and therefore I should be allowed to choose how I dress. I, I have friends that work as realtors, that work for big corporations, that work in small offices, and most of them, not all of them, but most of them are allowed to choose how they dress as long as they look and feel professional. Very few of my friends who work outside of the education world have very strict policies on what they can wear on their lower halves, right? Now, if there was a jean policy that said, hey, please don't wear holes in your pants, right? Or um, uh, please uh, don't wear anything that, I don't know how to phrase this in a nice way on the internet, um, that don't tempt certain students, I don't know how to put it, that aren't distracting to students, go for it. But my guess is, is that nice looking dress jeans are not actually distracting to most students. It's an outdated policy. In fact, I've seen uh, handbook, teacher handbooks from the 20s and 30s that have this exact same almost word for word gene policy in it. And you're like, wait a minute, when are we going to turn the corner here? When are we going to start seeing teachers as the true professionals that they are? Right now, I know a lot of teachers teachers don't have these jeans policies. And if you go through and read the hundred and fifty six comments on that post, or go read some of the policies on here, they're still getting the work done. 
right? They're still inspiring students. They're still designing creative, challenging, innovative curriculum. They're still doing the work and are having success. And those Fridays where they're wearing jeans is not taking a day off from that. And so I'm just, I mean, so to me, it's a bigger issue than wearing jeans. And that's what I would have written up on that post. And I thought it'd be easier to do it on here. To me, it's a bigger thing. It's saying, I trust you. I trust you as an educator. I trust you as, as a person who can go in and reach students and do this hard, difficult, challenging work that requires an education, that requires that you um, show up every day with the best interest for your students. And so that's where I land on this. Now, where do you land on it? Uh, I'm gonna read a little comments here. Joe says, it's outdated. My district still mandates ties for male teachers um, and time for a dress code overall. Is, is due, yes. I mean, uh, so, uh, Emily says, preach it. Um, oh, and then this is another great point. Susan Southwick says, and I've heard this over and over, and this is all over, um, especially in our lower elementary teachers. We can get around and down on the floor with kids easier when we wear jeans and not dressed up. Also not as worried about getting jeans dirty, yes. You know, my son's kindergarten teacher is always down with the students, always down on the ground reading with them or building with them or helping them with activities down low. And it's just easier to be comfortable with that. It's easier to do paint with students if you're not worried about getting them on a dress or on really nice slacks or whatever it is. Um, it's easier. You know, it actually fits the job description. You know, my, my friend who is a plumber doesn't wear dress pants to work because he's a plumber and he's down on his knees and he's getting dirty and he's doing this work, it wouldn't make sense to mandate that he wears dress clothes because the work that he does requires jeans or requires the type of pants that he wears. And I think that's true for lower elementary teachers, but then also upper um, secondary teachers. You know, as I, I've done projects with my students where we read the book To Build a Fire by Jack London. And this is one of my favorite things we've ever done. We read the book, or it's actually a short story. We read To Build a Fire, and it's all about this guy who goes out into sub-zero temperatures. It's like negative 60 degrees, and he's totally unprepared. And he goes, and he has to build a fire to get warm because he falls to the ice. And so he tries to build a fire with just a couple matches, and he does it in the snow, and he finally is successful, but then the fire heats up the snow above it, and it falls, and it puts out the fire, and the guy freezes to death. And, and we, my students love reading the story. It's an old story, but we get really into it. And then following the reading, that we always do this in the winter, we go out into the snow, and we build a fire. And I give my students the exact same supplies. These are high school students. I would give them the exact same supplies that the character in the story has, and we see if we can actually build a fire in the snow. And it's fun, and we connect it back to the literature, and we bring the book out with us, and we read it as we're building fires, and it's a blast. And I thank the Lord that I don't, I, I, that I don't have to wear dress pants that day because it wouldn't work. I need jeans for that assignment. As a secondary teacher, I need to be able to get down in the dirt and do that work. You know, when we have ever done Romeo and Juliet, we always like to act out the scenes and film it and everything. And it puts you in strange positions as you're acting it out and modeling for students. And it's helpful to be comfortable during that time. You know, I always love to read to high school students, you know, or even my college students now people still like to be read to. You know, they still like that. And it's fun if you create this atmosphere where everybody's comfortable to read. And so that might mean me getting down on the ground on a bean bag or whatever it is and reading to them. It's nice to be in jeans for that. It fits the job description. And I'm sure you could give example after example of how you have had to be active in your work and it would be helpful to feel comfortable during that work. Not to mention, aside from just the physical activity, there's a reality that as teachers, you are on your feet all day long for seven, eight hours. You are on your feet and you are moving. You're moving around the room. You're moving in the front of the room. You're giving talks. You're, you're, you're just kind of nimble. And it's helpful to be comfortable during that. And so like we've got this job description that says, yeah, wearing nice looking comfortable jeans makes sense. And yet when I put up a graphic, thousands of teachers all over the world can resonate with the fact that they're not allowed to. And that's what I think gets to the bottom of this. That's why I think it's an important um, discussion to have because it's more than genes, right? It's something bigger than that. It's about professionalism. professionalism. It's about being trusted as a professional to know what's best for your students. Um, I've, I know very few teachers who would put on 
you know, 1995 Jinkos with big holes in them looking like they're about to go to the state skate park after work. I know most teachers want to be seen as professionals, but they also want to be comfortable. And so that's just my two cents. Um, Lillian says, what about teachers who show up super casual all the time, like cargo shorts, sandals, and t-shirts? I show up professional, others don't. I feel a bit resentful. I'm with you, Lillian. I totally get that as well. Sweet, sweet coffee. Um, I get that as well. And so maybe there has to be some type of policy that says dress professional and we leave it up to the professionals to deem what that looks like. And if it gets abused, maybe that's where conversations go in. I don't think there's any throng, anything wrong with leadership helping direct um, and help people uh, do, be the best at their jobs. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And so I think if it does get abused and, uh, and people are wearing holy shirts or whatever it is, yeah, let's, let's tighten that up. But the reality is, I, I mean, I can only speak from my own experience, and that's from working in schools, and that's also from getting to connect with lots and lots of educators online. I just got a call in the middle of this thing. Did that disrupt it? No, we're still live. Good. We're going to go into do not disturb mode right now. All right. Um, yeah, I think we get it. I, th I think people um, know how to show up. Um, Oh, what, what are some of these things? say? I can wear jeans whenever I want. I wear them every once in a while. Nothing wrong with jeans and a nice top, Jessica says on here. Yes, and that's the other thing. Maybe you, as a teacher, deem that, you know what, I do want to wear a nice dress every day, or I do want to wear a suit and tie. I love that. I mean, there was, you know, I, I remember when I first started teaching, and it was also like when Mumford & Sons was really big, just being full disclosure here, I used to wear, like, vests to school. Like, I, oh, I want to, like, make this... Um, image for myself. I'm going to wear like a vest and maybe a nice, a nice cool like professor professor tie. I want to look the part. Yeah. And, and I don't do that as much anymore because it's not as comfortable for me. But yeah, if you want to dress like that, yes, have an open policy that allows it. But other people might feel like they can look professional while being comfortable. Go for it. Mary says, I feel like yoga pants is not professional. Sure. So, you know, maybe, maybe draw the line there. I think it's up to the staff, but I think we have to have teachers as part of that conversation. And I think that's one of the things that bugs a lot of educators is they start working at a school and this is a decision made by people who aren't on the ground in the classroom, right? It might be made by administrators who don't know the day-to-day -day of a teacher. It might be made by a school board who just goes and sees teachers during meetings or, or maybe stops in once or twice a year that don't understand the nitty-gritty work of being in the classroom. And maybe the teachers need to be a part of the decision of what that dress code looks like. And again, it kind of goes back to uh, the bigger question of, you know, treating teachers as the profession. Um, my wife keeps calling me, so I might just have to answer that. So anyway, there's my two cents. Um, I'll call her back. She's at the grocery store. Um, Thankfully, my principal doesn't prohibit us from wearing jeans. I try to limit my jeans days to Fridays. I've never had any holes in them either. Those are non-student day jeans. Yes. Okay. All right. So, anybody else want to add in on this? But And then I also should go back to what my original post said. Now that it's abundantly clear that teachers can still be effective while not wearing jeans and dresses, um, we just got through a very, or we, some of you might still be dead in the middle of it, a very, very difficult time period of being an educator. This COVID lockdown, distance learning, where you're sitting in front of a computer, or you're designing curriculum to deliver to students. It's been a really tough period in your job, am I right? It stretched you in ways that you've never been stretched, and yet I'm hearing from thousands of teachers all over the world that they've had successes in the middle of it. Maybe not the kind they envisioned for themselves, but they were still able to engage at least some of their students. And so I first off want to say, good on ya, good work, you made it, um, you're here in the summer, you did it. You went through a very difficult period, and maybe it's we're just in the middle of it. Maybe in the fall you're going to have to continue to do some of this distance learning, um, and uh, and yet you're still able to do it. And you might be wearing sweatpants right now. You were still able to connect with students, and you might be wearing jeans right now. And so we've shown that we can still connect even if we're not working under the same strict policies that we were working under when we were in person with our students. And so. Um, 
I don't know. I feel like a lot of teachers have stepped up in the last few months and shown that they are so capable of adapting and doing amazing work. And so I think as a society, we need to start trusting teachers. We need to start realizing that they are on the same par as every other professional who helps make our societies run and work and are absolutely necessary. And I think the small little details of our jobs need to reflect that as well, including no genes policies. So, all right, everybody, it is Monday and it is beautiful outside. And so I'm gonna work from here today. I've got some writing to do. I'm working on another book and uh, I'm gonna do it outside. And, and I am going to wear gym shorts while I do it. So everybody have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I can't wait to check in again soon. Um, thanks for the work you're doing. Thanks for being there for your students, even in the summer. Um, but I would encourage you right now, and this is just a side note, I would encourage you right now to unplug and maybe take a little break from thinking about teaching and do something that fills you up so that you can overflow on your students when you get back to it. So, all right, everybody. Have a phenomenal Monday. And Teresa says woohoo on the book. Not feeling woohoo yet. It's a lot of work, but uh, we'll get there. All right, bye everyone.